Hey, what's up guys? It's Gutex. Today, I'm gonna to be starting a new series called Street Fighter V 101. This is a tutorial series aimed at beginners. So for those of you guys that are more experienced, you're probably not gonna get anything out of this. So don't uh, worry about watching. But for those of you, but I will say, if you do have friends that are just starting to play, please show them this video and the rest of the videos in this series. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about offense. Now, the reason why offense is important is because the game is called Street Fighter, but as you guys may or may not know, it's not all about who can press the most buttons the fastest. This is not a button mashing game. This is a game of space control and nuance and decision making. So, uh, let's first uh, start up training mode. So training mode is important because uh, this is where you can practice all of your moves. Uh, you can practice defense, offense, everything. Uh, so once you're in training mode, uh, and I recommend to use the grid because it's easier to judge distances, then we have to set up our training mode settings properly. So the first thing to do is set attack data and key display on and uh, as you can see now, when I hit Ken, it'll say how much damage each attack did. Uh, and also the key display, which you can see moving on the bottom, will tell you what buttons or inputs you are pressing. Uh, so that, that can help you determine where you went wrong if, you are, uh, ha if you're having execution issues. Because just in the same way that if you wanted to learn how to play guitar or uh, throw uh, shoot a basketball, it would require some practice because there is muscle memory involved. So Street Fighter is the same. So um, what we're gonna do now that we have those settings on is we're going to set, we're gonna go over to our gauge settings and we're just gonna set everything to uh, normal and then restart. So this is what it looks like in a fresh match. Now. If you're playing on a fight stick, then first let me just give you a quick overview. Um, if you're playing on a controller, a, a PS4 pad, that's totally fine. Um, but basically I recommend holding the stick between your middle and your ring finger like this, and then gently using this part of your fingers to walk your character back and forth because movement is very important. So the first thing that you do, no matter where, whether you're using a stick or a pad, is practice moving Ryu. Oh, and if I didn't already say it, we're gonna basically only be using Ryu because Ryu is the game is the character that the entire franchise and this game was built around. So how are you gonna learn how to play Street Fighter if you don't know how to play Ryu, right? So first, just get comfortable walking back and forth. New players, sometimes they'll like kind of walk back like this and it's like kind of jerky, but you'll notice that I just kind of walk them back and forth and these nuances may seem um, unimportant, but I'm telling you, they, they are very important when you go up against an experienced player. So let's get into uh, some offense, right? So basically in Street Fighter, there are different types of attacks. You have your normal attacks, which is done by pressing either light, medium, heavy punch or light, medium, heavy kick. These are all standing attacks. Then there's crouching attacks, light, medium, heavy punch, light, medium, heavy kick. And then there's jumping attacks, jumping light punch, jumping medium punch, jumping heavy punch, jumping light kick, jumping medium kick, jumping heavy kick. Now I know what you're saying. Well, Gutex, this is really uh, kind of a lot. And yes, it is true. Um, you know, there's three different strengths for punches and three different strengths for kicks, but that's just the way that the game has been since Street Fighter 2. So you have to understand that each of his normal attacks serve a specific purpose. Um, you know, generally light attacks don't go very far. Um, like see, for example, I can't hit Ken from right here with a light attack. So this attack wouldn't be very good uh, from this range. But if I'm here, then it's better. So generally light attacks have a short range and they do a smaller amount of damage and they uh, are very quick. Medium attacks uh, generally uh, hit from a little bit further away, uh, but they take a little bit longer to come out just in the same way that, um, you know, when 
if you're in a fight or when you're you know training in boxing like you know you have like your jabs and those are really fast but they don't do a lot of damage but then you have you know like a cross or like a right hook and you know those do more damage but they they take longer to come out so street fighter is the same way um, and then of course you know you have your crouching variations see so light punch doesn't really go anywhere but crouching light punch has a much better range you see standing light punch whiffs from here crouching light punch actually connects um, so basically you have to go through with ryu and uh, explore each of his normal attacks so heavy punch and heavy kick these all have the most range here actually here let me set ken's health to uh, regenerate uh, and then okay so then you have the jumping attacks right um, so generally when you're a, a lot of new players they they jump a lot and this is usually because they haven't been trained or conditioned not to jump because they haven't fought an experienced player that will punish them for jumping um, so generally you want to stay on the ground but as you explore your normal attacks you'll see that Oh, see, look at jumping light punch, you know, like it kind of doesn't even really hit. So that's probably not a good move to try to, um, to try to hit somebody with because some moves are good when you're jumping in at the opponent and other moves are good if they're jumping at you. Um, so generally you want to use your heavy attacks when you jump in. So jumping heavy punch, jumping heavy kick. But if you just look at them, you know, you might see, okay, well, Jumping heavy punch, uh, the range is probably not as good as the heavy kick because his leg is longer than his arm. Makes sense, right? So you see right here, uh, if I take a tiny step closer, actually here, let me move him to the corner. Um, if I take a tiny step forward, jumping heavy kick connects. But from the same range, jumping heavy punch whiffs. So that means that if you're jumping in, generally heavy kick would be better. Uh, then of course we have cross ups. So some moves have to be blocked on the other side. You'll see right there on the screen. If you hit a cross up, like for example, with medium kick, it'll say cross up, which means you have to block it the other way. Um, so in addition to the standing, crouching and jumping normal attacks, you also have what are called command normals. And so these are moves that require you to press a direction on the controller as you hit the button. So for example, uh, Ryu has two command normals. The first one is forward medium punch, which is an overhead, which means it has to be blocked high. And then you have your uh, solar plexus strike, which hits twice and kind of moves him forward. And that's done by pressing forward and medium punch. And speaking of pressing forward and back and whatever, it's also worth noting that when you're on the left side of the screen, when I say forward, that means press pressing right on the controller. But if I'm on this side, on the right side of the screen, when I say forward, that means that you have to press left. See, so notice my key display. So see, if I'm on this side, forward heavy punch, boom. But if I'm on this side, if I press um, you know, left and heavy punch, I'm not gonna get it. So I have to press right and heavy punch if I'm on the left side. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, this is for super beginners. So if you already know this stuff, like you're, that, that's great. But um, you know, Street Fighter V is gonna bring in a whole new pool of players that have never played fighting games before. So you know, that's why we're going through the super basics. Um, so if you're not sure what the command normals are, and as we talk about special moves, um, you know, this is also useful. Uh, is to go to the command list and then it'll tell you what all of his special moves are and you might say well he's got fireballs he's got uppercuts why are we talking about normals well the reason why normals are important is because your special moves are used for specific instances and they also require some execution and in addition to that, they can also be risky. You know, if you're throwing a fireball, but I know that you're gonna jump, I can just, I, if you're throwing a fireball and I know that, I can just jump over and combo you. But if you didn't throw a fireball and you did something like, let's say, standing light punch or standing light kick, then I'm like, hmm, is he gonna throw the fireball? Maybe he's not. I probably shouldn't jump because that might mean that you might hit me as I jump in at you. 
But anyways, I digress. So here are the unique attacks or command normals as I was calling them. So this is where you can see, oh, I forgot, I forgot about Axe Kick. This is also where it, um, you know, they have the, the target combos. Then we have uh, the V system, critical art and throws. Uh, so three command normals, forward, uh, medium punch, which is an overhead, uh, solar plexus strike, which does two hits, moves the opponent forward. Oh, the cops are coming guys. Uh, back heavy kick, which is the axe kick. Each of these has their own uh, purposes, but for now, all you need to know is that most characters have command normals, and if you're not sure what they are, then the command list is a good place to find out. So before we start talking about special moves, let's talk about throws. Throws are important because it's uh, it goes along with the rock, paper, scissors analogy. So Street Fighter and fighting games in general are often compared to fast-paced rock, paper, scissors because uh, one, uh, one choice will beat one option, but another choice will lose to another option. Like for example, uh, rock beats scissors, but scissors beats paper and paper beats rock. So how does this apply to Street Fighter? Well, uh, if rock is attacking, then uh, paper would be blocking because if for example i'm going to set the dummy to block oops you know as i hit him you know nothing happens yes he takes a little gray life damage which is recoverable but basically um it doesn't really do anything so blocking effectively beats attacking um so now you might say, okay, well then, can't they just sit there and block forever? Well, yes, they could, but that's why throws are important because when the opponent is sitting there blocking, I can still throw them. So notice that, you know, Ken is is blocking everything that I throw at him, but when but when I actually throw him, which is done by pressing light punch and light kick together, then uh, he's unable to block that. A throw can either be um, neutralized by doing your own throw, which is called a tech throw. So if you think the opponent's going to throw you, then you also press light punch and light kick. Or if you think the opponent's going to throw you, you could probably hit them with an attack if it was fast. So I don't want to go too far deep into throws right now because that's actually part three. Uh, so just know that throws are, that throws are important and even though, I don't know, maybe if you played Street Fighter like a, you know 20 years ago, throws might have been cheap or off limits or whatever. Nowadays, that's just not the case um, because throws are really good because they're easy to execute. And you only press two buttons and they do a fair amount of damage and stun. You see it does 120 and 170 uh, stun, which is pretty solid for something that is really easy to do and is always a threat when you're close to the opponent. So now that we've talked about normal attacks and command normals and jump ins, uh, let's talk about special moves. So this is usually where most beginner players put all of their focus uh, because they fail to understand why normals and throws and blocking are important. But, um, you know, special moves are important, but it's just one piece of the puzzle. And usually special moves are also the part where people kind of get stuck because they get hung up on the execution part. So let's just start with the most, with the original special move, the, the, the special move that really the entire franchise was built around, which is reuse fireball or Hadoken. So of course the fireball is super iconic and has been in every version of Street Fighter. Um, and it's really important to be able to understand when and how to use it. But before we can talk about that, we need to talk about how to do it. So if you're not sure how to do a special move, then remember, go to command list and then look at, it. so it says down to forward. So you're going to go down, down, forward, forward, and then press any punch button. So this is why we have a key display turned on so that as you're throwing fireballs, if you somehow mess up, 
because for example, most people will press the button too early. So like the, if you notice when I do the motion, you can see that I'm pressing the punch button when the arrow is pointed down forward. This, is, this means that the that I press the button too soon and that you should press it a little bit later. So like, this is what, you know, when I, when I said earlier that there's like muscle memory to this. So like you have to, res if you're gonna try to be good at Street Fighter, you have to respect the muscle memory aspect of it because your execution and your ability to do the move that you want whenever you want it is really important to winning. So, if you're trying to throw fireballs and you're not able to do it consistently, and when I say consistently, I mean five times in a row, like, and really it's like 10 times in a row, but you know, just for beginners, like if you can do a fireball five times in a row, like, okay, that's pretty good. You're doing well. If you can't do the fireball five times in a row, then what you should do is just focus on doing the motion first. So the motion is down, down, forward, forward. So I want you to look at just look at the input display. So here I'm gonna clear it, right? So just watch, down, down, forward, forward. Down, down, forward, forward. Down, down, forward, forward. And if you're using a dual shock, that's fine. It's the same thing. Um, it's just that you have to understand that there is gonna be a little bit of a learning curve. And so in the same way that if you're trying to learn an instrument, you would have to practice, you know, warming up and stuff. When you're first starting out, you do have to practice and you do have to warm up. So why don't you try it right now? Practice throwing fireballs. And you'll also notice that if you don't press the button at the same time, what? Okay, so once you are able to throw the fireball um, or do the motion consistently where all you get is down, down, forward, forward. Oh, and if you're using a dual shock, you should try using the D pad and the analog stick to see which one feels more comfortable. In my opinion, some moves are easier on the D-pad and other moves might be easier on the analog stick. So that's an important uh, point to note. Uh, but basically, you should get comfortable with just doing the motion and then pressing the button. So notice how I'm doing the motion and pressing the button, but the fireball doesn't come out. Well, it doesn't come out because I'm pressing the button too late. So the reason why I'm telling you to do it this way is because most people, when they first start out throwing fireballs, it's too much for their brain to remember. So instead of trying to do, trying to do too much at once, we're just trying to train our brain to do one thing at a time. So once you're comfortable with the down, down, forward, forward, for, down, down, forward, forward motion, then press the punch button. And as you get comfortable pressing the punch button, then you can start to do the punch button sooner because your brain will start to kind of auto-correct. See? Every time, no big deal. I can talk to you guys, I can do whatever. I can do fireballs in my sleep. Why? Because I've thrown hundreds of thousands of these in my lifetime. Um, okay, so let's move on to the next one, which is his uh, Shoryuken. So this is useful if they jump at you and it's also useful in a combo. And the motion is forward, down, down, forward, and then punch. So this is a little bit uh, more advanced, but there's also a couple of different shortcuts that you can use. Like for example, I'm just wiggling the stick between down and down forward, and usually that'll get an uppercut. Um, also, you could just tap down forward twice, and that would get the uppercut. Um, or you can hold forward and then throw a fireball, and that will also give you an uppercut. Um, so, this is also useful in combos. Um, but it's most useful when they jump at you. So for example, and this is something that I'm just going to um, use this as an example. We're not gonna go too deep into this because defense is covered in the next section. So Ken jumps in. Uh, so basically, um, you know, the, the uppercut can be used. And notice I'm doing medium punch uppercut. Um, so this can be pretty consistent, um, but also, um, you know, it is useful in combos. So let's go back. Um, then we have the Tatsu. So his hur hurricane kick or Tatsu, whatever you want to call it, is done by uh, doing a reverse fireball with kick. So just in the same way that you practice throwing the fireballs and then really throwing the fireballs on uh, the opposite side of the screen, uh, the, same would, the same applies to doing the Tatsu. Um, 
So once, uh, okay, so that's basically like his special moves. So then now let's talk about EX special moves. Now you'll notice that as you attack the opponent, your uh, critical gauge, which is the blue gauge at the bottom, starts to build. And as each one fills up, then you can use an EX version of your special move. EX specials are done by pressing two buttons instead of one. So if, if fireball is done by, uh, by doing the motion and pressing punch, then EX fireball uh, is done by pressing uh, two buttons or three buttons, it doesn't matter, um, instead of one. Oh, here, so let me set my critical gauge to auto recover. Okay, so we have a full critical critical art gauge. So now you can see, and here, let me just demonstrate for you. So look at the, look at the damage and the stun. Uh, 60 damage, 100 stun. Okay, so how why would you use an EX? Well, EX moves are like special powered up versions of your special moves. So look at EX Fireball does 100 damage and 150 stun instead of 60 damage and 100 stun. And it hits twice and it knocks the opponent down. EX Uppercut does 160 damage and 200 stun, uh, as opposed to uh, Medium Punch Uppercut, which does 120 uh, damage and 150 stun. So you don't, I don't want to get too caught up on the damage and stun values. I just want you to, to know that this is uh, why you would use your EX special moves. Um, also, uh, EX Tatsu can be good uh, because it, it pushes them further away. See, they, you get the knockdown and they're, they're um, far away. So then if they were, if you're trying to get them off of you, that could be a move that could help. Uh, so also, uh, the other thing that you, so think of your critical gauge as your resources because you can uh, spend them on EXs or you could spend all three bars on your critical art which is uh, similar to a super combo in other games. So Ryu's critical art is done by doing two fireball motions and then pressing the punch button. So this should be pretty easy for you with practice because the only difference between throwing one fireball and doing a critical art is just that you have the second fireball motion in there. So each character's critical art usually uh, varies depending on the button that you press. So you can see if I do light, uh, then the, the, the super goes kind of slow. If I do heavy, then it goes kind of fast. Uh, so you're gonna have to try it out and see, you know, see the differences. Um, just, to, just to give you like a quick fast forward into how you would actually use that in a match. Well, if you comboed into your light Tatsu, then you could juggle with your critical art. So that, you see that does like pretty solid damage. Okay, so we've talked about uh, specials, EX, critical art. Ah, now, so let's talk about V-Trigger. So um, as you take damage and hit the opponent and uh, land crush counters and whatnot, your V-Trigger, uh, your V-Gauge will start to build. So notice the red flashing meter at the bottom, that's your V-Gauge. So Every character's V trigger is unique, and Ryu's, which is all, and all of them are activated by pressing medium punch, I mean, heavy punch and heavy kick together. So Ryu's puts him into dungeon mode. And this is important because now uh, his fireballs are much faster, and they can also be charged by holding the button. So, and you'll notice that it does more stun, and it will even cause a guard break if they're blocking. Oops. So let me activate. So you see how he was blocking and then he wasn't blocking. Um, the other thing that V-Trigger is useful for is to, uh, I mean, obviously, you know, it could be used, you know, in the, in, in the neutral game uh, outside of a combo, but it could also be used in a combo. Like, and I don't wanna, um, we're not gonna talk too much about it. I just wanna demonstrate for you quickly. Oops. So you see, I was able to use my V-Trigger to extend the combo. Um, so V-Trigger is useful uh, for a lot of stuff like that. And the other thing is that your V-Gauge will reset every round. So 
you should use your V-trigger, especially as a beginner. Anytime you, your V-gauge v fills up, you should probably use it, even though over the long run, you know, you'll start to see that there's, you know, you can not use it immediately after you get it. But as a beginner, it's important to keep an eye on both your V-gauge and your critical gauge so that uh, you don't die with unused resources. Like for example, if it's third round and you have full V-trigger and full critical gauge and you died, you missed your opportunity to use uh, resources. So that's pretty much an introduction to offense. Um, I'm going to, let's see, um, let me give you guys a couple of quick combos that you could practice um, as a beginner. And uh, let me, okay, so, the simplest combo with Ryu is his target combo, which is medium punch, heavy punch, heavy kick. So all you have to do is hit the buttons really quick. It doesn't require any timing, um, but it's so it's really easy to do. And it does pretty solid damage, 170 damage and 227 stun. That's pretty good for just hitting three buttons that don't require super um, timing. So that's a good one to practice. Um, so when would you use that? Well, let's say that you thought the opponent was gonna, was gonna throw a fireball, or let's say you dizzied them and you jumped at them. So what you could do is jump in and then do the target combo. So jump in heavy kick, medium punch, heavy punch, heavy kick. Easy, right? Should be pretty easy. Um, if you were to uh, block the opponent's uh, uppercut, like for example, So Ken is just going to uppercut over and over and over. Then you could, of course, do your target combo. So practice that. But it would be better if you practiced another uh, another combo, which is that one. So that's heavy kick, which will score a crush counter. Uh, and that's a, a good way to punish for beginners. Now, let's say you want something, you're like, ah, Gutex, like, I'm, give me a little credit. Okay, fine. So if you want a more slightly advanced combo to practice, then uh, first you should try to do standing medium punch into crouching medium punch into fireball. So the way that you um, do that is by doing crouching medium punch fireball. And you notice that I'm, as soon as I press the medium punch, I'm doing the fireball motion and hitting the button. That's called a cancel. I'm canceling the crouching medium punch animation into the fireball. So you might say, oh, okay, well, what about medium kick? Like, that's pretty good. Like, let me cancel that into fireball. Well, you can't. Unfortunately, not all moves are cancelable into special moves, but this is why you practice in training mode so that you can figure out which ones are and which ones aren't cancelable. Um, so this is like a pretty, you know, that's that's a pretty solid combo or maybe standing medium kick, crouching medium kick into medium kick Tatsu, that's pretty good. Um, and then I guess you could also do a jump and heavy kick, standing medium punch, crouching heavy punch into medium kick Tatsu. Or you could do the same into light Tatsu. Oops. You have to be really close. So there we go. So basically that uh, about wraps it up for part one of our basics. Um, so basically we went through normals, crouching, jumping. Uh, we talked about command normals. We talked about special moves, EX, critical art. Talked a little bit about V-Trigger and then I showed you guys some super basic combos that you can use uh, on your opponent. I also want to uh, tell you, I've been getting a lot of questions about Street Fighter V. So um, I want to encourage you to add me on this new app I've been using called Blend. It's on iOS and on Android. You can see the, uh, the little icon on the bottom uh, right of the screen. My screen name is Gutex. Uh, add me in there and I will add you to the Street Fighter V training group and you can hit me up with uh, more questions. Uh, so look out for part two tomorrow um, here right here on the Cross Counter TV channel. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at Gutex and on Instagram. Um, but yeah, we put, if you're new to the channel, uh, myself and my partner in crime, Mike Ross, we put out new episodes of the excellent adventures of Gutex and Mike Ross, where we challenge online warriors. Um, and that, uh, 
that comes out every Sunday. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this was useful. Uh, let me know, leave a comment and uh, look forward to uh, seeing you and playing you online. So hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Later.